You've tuned in to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes. Your access to success strategies and more to help you move onward and upward with your life. Listen in each week as she interviews others who have really taken their essence to the next level and truly unpause their life. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Estes. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Dr. Kelly Estes and I am founder of the Addictions Academy. The Addictions Coach and Rehab Rescue. Welcome to Unpause Your Life. This is a great podcast where we showcase people who have done something extraordinary with their life. I welcome you and I hope you enjoy all of our guests. On my way found a reason to wake up another day. Before we get started, let's hear this short message from one of my supporters. Did you know 81% of Americans would like to become a published author? Chances are you might be one of them. What's stopping you? Writing and publishing a book takes a lot of work and is expensive, right? Well, not anymore. For your next book project, or even your first, team up with Hassle-Free Books. They make it so easy to become an author. They remove all of the fuss and struggle and make it smooth and simple. And it's far more affordable than you could ever imagine. Go to hasslefreebooks.com and use promo code UNPAUSE to receive a 10% discount off of any book project. Get started right away and become a published author in as little as 45 days. For your free one-hour book formula guide, which will show you just how painless it can be to become an author, head to hasslefreebooks.com today. All right. Thanks again for joining me. Let's get started with today's show. Took a walk down the dark road Where they said that I shouldn't go I knew the dangers of You are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes of the Addictions Coach and the Addictions Academy. My guest today is Matthew Budop. He is a doctor and a professor of medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine, director of cardiac CT, the Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance, California. Dr. Budoff received his medical degree from the George Washington University School of Medicine in Washington, D.C., and completed an internship and residency in internal medicine, as well as a fellowship in cardiology at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. He received the Einstein Award for Scientific Achievement from the International Biographical Center in Cambridge, U.K., and was awarded the top oral abstract at the American Heart Association's 2009 meeting. Most recently, he was named to the U.S. News & World Report list of top doctors for 2011. Welcome, Dr. Budoff. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for having me. My goodness, all your accomplishments are such a mouthful for me. I'm like, oh my God, look at all this stuff. Uh, No, it's uh, it's, uh, been uh, many, many years to, Mm -hmm. to get there, but it's been great. So tell me what you're doing now. Are you seeing patients? Are you doing research? What are you doing right now? Yeah, so outside of talking with you, I'm uh, I'm doing a lot of research. I see patients as well, but but I spend more time doing research and teaching than I do uh, uh, in direct patient care. And a lot of it has to do with how we can stay healthy, how we can keep our heart healthy, and how we can identify, are we at risk? I feel good now, but is that really the case? Okay. Tell me about the patients you see. Are they older with heart problems? Are you seeing younger people? What's the trend? Uh, I I see a lot of patients who are um, in the preventive mode. So I kind of consider myself a preventive cardiologist. I'm trying to prevent their first heart attack. I see, of course, some traditional cardiac patients who already have heart failure, already had a stent put in or or, or heart, heart attacks. But I spend a lot of time taking care of patients who have some problems, high cholesterol, diabetes, family history, and want to not go down, you know, the road of heart disease. Okay. Do you see any younger people with drug addiction problems with heart problems? I do. I do. I have a, somebody right now I'm taking care of in the hospital, very sick, a uh, drug user and got an infected valve. And now he's very, very ill. So I definitely take care of some patients who have 
done the wrong things in the past and you know now are trying to fix the heart or unfortunately some who are still doing some things that are wrong. Okay. So what does that conversation look like? Well, I mean, obviously we tried to equate the the drug use, let's say anything from uh, excessive alcohol, smoking to, you know, obviously more severe therapies like methamphetamines or, or heroin. And we try to talk to them about what the consequences are for their heart and for their body. And, you know, if they can quit, what their outlook would be like. Okay, awesome. So February is American Heart Month. I know from listening to the news, we've been told that heart disease is the number one killer of men and women. Is that still accurate? Yeah, you know, so we've seen a remarkable decline in heart attacks and strokes in men and women over the past 20 years. But over the past three or four years, it's plateaued. It's stopped going down. And you can argue it may be going up a little bit. It's starting to trend the wrong direction. So we've seen a great improvement, but it's still number one. It kills more men and, and women than every other uh, disease. It kills more men and women. Heart disease kills more men and women than all cancers put together. So if you put together breast cancer and lung cancer and colon cancer and all these other terrible things, Heart disease still takes more lives of Americans than, than all the cancers combined. Now, what causes heart disease? So I know what a heart attack is, and I know what that feels like, you know, the pain, the shooting, the numbing, et cetera. But what's the difference with heart disease? Isn't that like a long-term progression? And what causes that? Yeah, so it is a long-term progression. People probably have it for about 20 years before it shows up as a heart attack or a, a brain attack, a stroke. But basically, it's building up a plaque of, of gunk in the arteries. So think of your, your arteries that bring blood to your heart. So blood carries oxygen and all the organs need oxygen. And if you ever don't get oxygen to the heart or to the brain, you have a, a heart attack or a stroke and you have permanent damage. So Think of these pipes slowly getting rusty and getting built up with so much rust and gunk that eventually they just, the pressure goes away and, and it's a complete blockage, right? So, you know, when that happens in our house, we call the plumber, they, they do a little rotor rooter and we're good. Here, it's a little different. The gunk builds up from diabetes, from high cholesterol, from blood pressure problems, from genetic problems, what we call family history of heart disease from smoking and all of these things contribute to causing these blockages to build up. And once it's there, we don't have a roto rooter. We don't have a liquid draino to break up the clogs. So then it's a more chronic problem. And then we got to deal with it for the rest of their lives. Wow. So this is like, like a, a sink clog that's built up slowly over time. It doesn't just happen. And then, you know, we run to the store, we get Drano, we fix the problem, or we call the plumber and fix the problem. So let's talk about the buildup. Like, what are some things you can do now to not end up with heart disease? Right. So first, as you know, obviously, in everything I, I say, hopefully, people will, will trust to, you know, talk to their doctors about and make sure it's, it's right for them and all of that. But I think that some simple things. So what I call the ABCs, and it's a little more than ABC, but A is aspirin. So if you have a lot of plaque in your arteries, if you uh, have a lot of risk of heart disease, your, your diabetes, you have multiple risk factors, like also you have high blood pressure and cholesterol. You have some people have a lot of those problems. An aspirin a day keeps the cardiologist away, and that's a 81 milligrams or low dose aspirin. So that's A. B is blood pressure. Simple, just control the blood pressure and the risk goes down. C is cholesterol, same thing. Get the cholesterol under control and, and the problem goes away. Then it gets back to what patients can do for themselves. And that starts with D. So D is diet. Obviously, a lot of different diets, but people can lose weight or eat better. E is exercise, right? You want to just get that exercise. F is fish or fish oil. Very good for the heart. So eat more fish if you can. Substitute fish for for meat every now and then at home or when you're eating in a restaurant. And then G is garlic. And I've done a lot of research with garlic to show that if you can take garlic supplements, that you can actually reduce your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and the plaque in the arteries. So we can actually do a little bit of good with the ABCs. And that goes down to G. We're not going to go through the rest of the alphabet. So 
this is uh, this is actually awesome for me because I'm Italian. We put garlic in everything. Garlic is on everything. So that's awesome to hear that simple things like that are a way to help prevent some of these major diseases. That's great. Now, yeah, and we call that the Mediterranean diet, and that's obviously where you guys are in Italy, and uh, that's part of the reason. It's it's you know it's fish and and garlic are parts of that diet. Now, have you ever had somebody come to you that says, "I run, I work out, I eat healthy, and they still have heart disease"? Oh yeah, we see even marathon runners that have heart disease. And remember, Jim Fix, right? He wrote a book called Run for Life. He actually died of heart disease. So it's definitely. Lifestyle helps, but lifestyle cannot completely overcome your genetics. So sometimes people need help with medicines or supplements. So how do you find out if you're genetically predisposed to heart disease? For example, my pop-up, who I have a lot of traits of, died of heart disease, My, which is my mom's father. And my dad's father had heart disease and lung cancer, but he was a smoker. And they both were smokers. So I don't know if it's a genetic thing. Or a smoking thing. Plus, they both ate like crap. Right. Beside the point. So, how, <laughs> yeah. How do so I? I had, I had the same problem. So I had the, I had the same problem. My my dad was smoker and ate poorly and was heavy and got heart disease. And I didn't know, is it genetic that I'm going to get it, or is it because of lifestyle, like your like your pop pop? And the answer is there are simple tests like scans of the heart that we can do that very easy and it'll say yes or no yes you have a lot of plaque or no you have no plaque and if you can find that out then then doctors know and you know whether it's worth chasing that down because we have a lot of issues right i mean there's a lot of things that we can be concerned about in life and a lot of patients more than half have no heart disease at all not even a speck that their arteries are completely clean and maybe they can focus on some other things, right? And other people feel well, run every day, think they're invincible, and they are terrible. They're they're the gym fixes that have this plaque building up regardless of what they do. And they need they need to know so that they can be more proactive and their doctor can be more proactive. So it all comes down to a simple heart scan. Interesting. So where would someone go for that? Do they find, just talk to their cardiologist or is there like a, I don't know, an outpatient place you go for that? Or how does that work? Uh, yeah, so it, it can be as simple as, uh, yeah, just talking to your primary care doctor. Uh, it's called a heart scan or a calcium scan because it looks for calcified plaque in the arteries. So either heart scan or calcium scan. Um, we have some information about it on a website, just www.calciumscan.com. People can read about it a little bit. And they're all over the place. Every major hospital in the country has the capability of doing this test. And a lot of places offer it. So I would suggest if you're at risk of heart disease, you have a family history or you have some uh, cholesterol problems or you used to smoke or still smoke, so just do a simple test. It's five minutes. It's, there's no needles. It's all non-invasive. It's a very simple test. And I think you can get comfortable with the concept of, of whether or not you as an individual are at risk or not of having a heart attack. Oh, awesome. So that's great advice for our, our listeners. That's fantastic. Now, what, and it's so easy to do. Yeah. What age do you recommend people start paying attention to their heart? Because I know, you know, when you're in your teenage years, you're not thinking about anything. When you're in your 20s, you're invincible, you're drinking, you're eating pizza, you know, you're running around being invincible. And then in your 30s, you're having babies and getting married. When is a good time to say, hey, I need to take a look and see what's going on? Right. So probably mid 40s for most of us, uh, women, maybe a little bit later. So probably for most people, men over 40, that's the age of atherosclerosis. That's the age when plaque starts to build up. Women a little bit later, they get a little bit of a break. Maybe estrogen protects them a little bit before menopause. But definitely by age 50, everybody should shift their focus to at least think about heart disease as a problem. And, I, and I'll bet everybody, if they talk to family members and, or know somebody who was fine one day, and either had a heart attack or died the next. And we don't want that to happen anymore. We want people to know that there's something wrong and there are simple treatments, as simple as ABC, to, to stop the heart attack. We can stop almost every heart attack if we just get people on simple therapy. 
That's interesting you said that. One of my husband's friends just turned 40 and he had a heart attack at 38. And, you know, he seemed normal. He wasn't overweight. He'd go to work every day. You know, he'd watch his football and have have beer and wings and whatever. And just boom, had a heart attack. And there was nothing there that for us. And then we found out later, you know, he would eat poorly when he wasn't around other people and occasionally do a little cocaine, which kind of progressed the problem. So I think it's important for everybody to say, you know, let's get checked. Let's make sure we feel good and we know we're good. Right. And and, and probably in his case, if you've got a good history, I'll bet that he had a family history of early heart disease because 38 is pretty young. Obviously, cocaine can tip the scales, but but 38 is pretty young unless there's something else going on as well. But still, yes, that's the kind of example that I want people to be aware of because it will happen and it will happen suddenly. And unfortunately, in two out of three cases, once you have that attack, it's either going to cause permanent scarring to the heart. So now you're a heart attack survivor and forever you're going to have a little bit less activity and a little bit less function, or you're just going to die that day. And obviously that's not a good end point. So, so we want to make sure people know and get the treatment they need before the big one happens. Now, I had heard through a friend of mine that different supplements can help reduce heart disease and heart attack, such as the omega-3, 6, and 9. Is that true? So, yeah, and and the omegas, uh, uh, probably uh, three is by far the best, the EPA and DHA. We get a lot of omega-6 in our diet already. And um, so, uh, yes, I think omegas are great. Fish oils are great. Um, we don't eat enough fish. Nobody, none of us eat enough fish in our diets. Uh, at least, you know, the vast majority of us don't. Maybe there's a couple sushi nuts out there that get enough. But for most of us, we need to supplement our fish intake if we have risks of heart disease or if we have plaque in the arteries. Um, And sometimes it's as simple as just some some fish oil and your doctor, there's even prescription fish oil for people who have more serious issues and need a little more of a, a boost. So fish oil is one. And as I mentioned before, garlic is is the other. The two that are best proven to reduce heart disease risk is fish oils and garlic. And and we've studied this aged garlic extract or kyolic, and it's been really, really dramatic in its benefit. I was surprised because as a trained, traditionally trained, you know, professor of medicine and cardiologist at UCLA, I did not, I was not a big supplement person when I did my training. And I, I got turned on to, to, to do some research for this company and I was doing research and the studies kept coming out positive. And now I truly believe that it's a, of, of benefit to the heart. Um, and we have more trials ongoing now that we're still doing our big, big studies now to look at the overall benefit and how it benefits the mechanism by which it helps. But, but garlic supplement seems to be another good one. Awesome. What takeaways could you give our listeners besides buy garlic and get early scans? I know it's heart month. So what else should they be doing? (laughs) So uh, obviously, you know, we we breathed over it a little bit, but but D and E. So we talked about F and G, fish oil and garlic, but D and E, diet and exercise. So it is a good time of the year now. Holidays are over. We're supposed to be following our, our, we've already given up on most of our New Year's resolutions, but we can still jump back in. It's only early February. And I would say to start eating a little better. So enjoy your football games, have the wings, have the beer, do all of that. But when you're, when you're not out celebrating and at parties in between those, try to eat a little bit healthier. The easiest diet for long longevity we talked about already is the Mediterranean diet. A little extra fish, a little extra, a little more chicken than red meat, but you can have some red meat. You have a little more uh, a wine or alcohol is good for the heart or in moderation. Spice up your food with garlic, uh, use olive oil. Those type of things are going to be really beneficial for people. If you want to uh, have a, a diet plan or, or a, a food plan that the South Beach diet, is uh, kind of mixes the Mediterranean diet and the low carb diet, and it's kind of a nice way to kind of have a new one out for men now. So the South Beach diet is a, is a good one that I like to have my patients follow if they're interested in losing some weight. And then finally, exercise. We just gotta we just gotta either hit the gym or take a walk. I mean, it's not hard. You can take a walk at lunch, right? Just walk around your building if you're working. 
just walk around the floor or go outside and walk around the building if it's nice. If you're somewhere it's colder, then walk around the inside of the building, but just move a little bit. Go up and down the stairs a few times. So don't take the elevator if you work on the second floor. Simple things that'll help you have less heart disease. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on, and I hope our listeners listen to your advice. And how can they find you if they want to reach you directly? So the easiest way is to just go to that uh, www.calciumscan.com. I have uh, I have contact info there. You can reach out. I'll be glad to answer personal questions as best I can. And uh, you know, if anybody's uh, interested in uh, um, anything that we talked about, I'll try to I'll try to give them the right resources where they can get more information. Awesome. Thank you for coming on, Dr. Budoff. I appreciate it. No, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening. I really hope you enjoyed the show today. Head on over to iTunes and Apple Podcasts and leave a comment or review of what you think. Or contact us at 1-800-706-0318. If you want to be on our show, feel free to email or call And if you have a topic, feel free to email or call as well. Thanks for listening to Unpause Your Life. For show notes and more, head on over to unpauseyourlife.com. Big shout out to recoveryinnovators.com for help producing this show. Thank you, guys. Took a walk down the long road The weather said that I shouldn't go On my way found a reason To wake up another day But they needed to show you All the things that you won't do Find faith or religion But nothing Said that I shouldn't go. I knew the dangers of.